Welcome to one of the most highly rated road trips in the United States, US Route 1, the overseas highway in the Florida Keys. It's about 110 miles long and takes less than three hours to drive if you drove it straight through. Like all great road trips, there are a large number of places you could sightsee along the route, so we'll describe some of our favorites. You could even break up the drive over several days to take part in various activities on different keys by staying at one of the 59 TripAdvisor listed resorts along the route. Buckle up and join us on this iconic journey. Our drive usually begins at Gilbert's Resort, just across the bridge from Key Largo, right at the start of the highway. It's a tropical paradise with a lovely tiki bar, delicious food, and stunning waterfront views. It's the perfect spot to kick off our road trip because it's at the start of the highway and located about an hour and a half from Miami Airport, so you can decompress after flying into the state. First stop, Key Largo, where we'll dive into history with the wrecks of the Bibb, Duane, and Spiegel Grove. These sunken ships are now vibrant artificial reefs. The Bibb and Duane are cutters over 300 feet long and are teeming with sea life and have significant coral growth since they were sunk in the 1980s. The Spiegel Grove, is a Navy landing ship dock sunk in 2002 and it's a whopping 510 feet long and is still the third largest ship ever sunk as an artificial reef. If you're looking to win a trivia bet, it's named after the Ohio estate of Rutherford B. Hayes, the 19th president of the United States. Its massive proportions along with its eerie landing ship bay are an unforgettable sight. While the John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park gets all the press when it comes to diving off Key Largo, the wrecks are where we put our money. For those less interested in going deep, we visit Jules Undersea Lodge, the only fully underwater hotel where you can sleep with the fishes, literally. It's an interesting adventure for those wanting to try something out of the ordinary, although after diving the wrecks, hanging around a shallow lagoon in an underwater bubble with a big mattress didn't seem to particularly float our boat. Then we head to Isla Morada, a village made up of several keys just west of Key Largo. Our first stop is Rain Barrel Village, an eclectic collection of shops and galleries. It's the perfect place to pick up a unique souvenir or two. It's hard to miss because of the gigantic lobster that stands in the front. We even found towels that had our family motto of, boy did that escalate quickly, on them. It certainly delivers on classic Florida kitsch. We then passed the Theater of the Sea, a stop we've always bypassed. Moving on, you can visit the History of Diving Museum. <laughs> Do you want to get in the helmet? No. Explore fascinating exhibits and learn about the evolution of underwater exploration. Nothing to see here, not drinking wine out of the barrel. No. Mike will now explain to you the history of diving with the clan. No, Kathy, that's not the bathroom. Oh, shoot. There is an interesting display of diving helmets from around the world for real gear geeks like us. It even features deep diving mini tanks that allow the wearer to visit great depths without needing weeks of decompression treatments just to survive. If you're into diving like us, this is a must stop. Feeling hungry? The Isla Mirada Fish Company restaurant is great for seafood lovers. Fresh fish, stunning waterfront views, and a laid back atmosphere make it a top dining spot. It was fun watching the kids feed the tarpons at the restaurant in the lagoon, but wait for it, we have an even better tarpon feeding recommendation. No trip to Isla Mirada is complete without feeding the tarpons at Robbie's on Matacumbi Key. These massive fish put on quite a show and an experience you won't forget. The restaurant here is pretty good, so you can stick around and swap fish stories afterwards. Continuing our drive, we pass through the town of Marathon, allowing for further opportunities to stop and eat. After Marathon, we cross the world-famous Seven Mile Bridge, opened in 1982. Right next to it, you can see the old bridge, which was opened in 1912 as part of the Overseas Railroad. Parts of it are open to pedestrians and cyclists, with gaps in the bridge where there were once swing bridges to allow taller boats to pass. It's amazing to see how well these century-old bridges have survived through hurricanes and other large storms. These iconic bridges offer breathtaking views of the surrounding turquoise waters. It's a drive like no other. We continue to pass many keys, small towns, countless resorts, and even a deer sanctuary on Big Pine Key before finally arriving at the end of the road on Key West. We dutifully visit Mile Marker Zero on Whitehead Street to see the official starting point of the Overseas Highway. 
Then we duck into our usual stay on the island, the historic Eden House, built in 1924, but restored to give modern amenities while retaining the feel of Old Town Key West. This town offers a myriad of activities, but that's the story for another video. Every guidebook rates this drive as one of the best in the United States, right up there with Route 66, Highway 1 through Big Sur, 17-mile drive near Monterey, the Blue Ridge Parkway, along with scenic roads around some of the nation's national parks. While it doesn't feature incredible mountain views or take multiple days to drive, it's still something everyone feels richer for experiencing. We've done it many times and we'll certainly do it again in the future. Thanks for joining us on this unforgettable drive along the overseas highway. We hope you've enjoyed the ride. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe for more exciting travel videos. Thanks for watching.